This video was initially intended to be a double arch flat plane night guide tutorial, but it transitioned into a sleep device one. Remember, all sleep devices are considered medical class 2 devices and require FDA 510k approval for manufacturing. I do not manufacturing sleep devices and this video is for entertainment purposes only. Exocat has a pretty cool new feature that allows you to design double arch night guards and today I'm going to show you how to make them occlude against each other with a flat plane. If you want to bring this design to the next level and make a sleep device out of it, I will give you my suggestions. Remember, I am not a medical doctor or a dentist, so always seek medical advice from a professional. After entering the information, save the order form and click design. The latest ExoCAD version lets you segment the T's and use that information for a variety of purposes. If you click on each tooth to separate them from the arch, and in the night guard module, this information is used to calculate the splint line automatically. Even though this feature is kind of fascinating, the splint line shows some overlapping and I noticed some inconsistent results when using this feature. It works great for the copy denture, but in the night guard mode, I'm skipping this for now to create my own splint line. In order to avoid as many undercut blockouts in the anterior regions as possible, I'm repositioning the upper and also lower arches and set the new insertion directions. The blockout is getting finalized with a click on apply. Since we are fabricating a double arch appliance and the inter all scans are in occlusion, we need to open the byte virtually. The amount of byte opening is determined by the cusp positions of the posteriors and canines. A good starting point is 2 mm vertical distance between the closest upper and lower cusp to each other. To determine this, I created a tool that you can download from my Patreon page. As always, supporting members can get this for free. We are importing both plates as a generic mesh and make sure to combine them so you can move them as one unit. These special flat planes are also used at a later stage to create a flat plane on the appliances. So positioning them correctly is essential for a successful outcome and to avoid any holes. In expert mode, I click on align mesh to position the plates manually and by clicking on control on the keyboard, I can rotate the mesh. A good starting point is to place the mesh into the occlusal plane. After that, I set the visibility to 60%, which lets me see the special yellow line inside the plate. Make sure the highest cast of a molar or canine on the lower arch is not penetrating over that line. To make corrections, you can rotate the mesh or change the vertical orientation. I make sure to check the right, left and canines for any interferences with the guideline inside the plate. Please make sure you take your time with the positioning of the plate and exit the alignment mode to get back into wizard mode. Click on Start Visual Articulator now and correct the positions of the jaw by defining the incisal point as well as both left and right molar positions under automatically in jaw corrections. Now we want to open the articulator to create vertical space between both arches. Ideally, the clinician is establishing the correct bite in the patient's mouth. The Stratus 300 articulator lets us open the bite up to 5 mm, and in some cases, that is sufficient. Under articulator type, I change to Stratus 300 adjustable, which lets me change the vertical up to 10 mm. To identify the correct amount, I am opening, I bring back the special plate to start opening the bite until the lowest cast of the upper posterior teeth are not penetrating that line anymore. When the bite is established in the articulator, I click on Start Articulator Simulation and exit by clicking OK. Before advancing with the splint line, I transition to expert mode and right click on the special plate to access Edit Mesh from the menu. Opting for select by click on surface, I adjust the plate if needed by holding the control key to rotate it. I begin by selecting the lower plate. If it appears yellow, I simply press delete. This action removes the lower plate, leaving the upper plate visible. Then I right click on the save button and choose save scene to mesh from the menu. For simplicity, I name the mesh as U for upper and save the mesh in the original coding system. Next, I reverse the deletion of the lower plate, click on none and, and select the upper plate. Pressing delete on the keyboard, I follow the same procedure as before to save the plate, now named L for lower, ensuring it's saved in the original coding system. 
Finally, I undo the entire operation and exit mesh by clicking OK. Now I will begin with the splint line design process. If you have opted for the AI segmentation, ExoCAD will handle this automatically as demonstrated earlier. Ensure that the occlusal thickness and peripheral thickness is both set at 1.5 mm. Once confirmed, repeat the procedure for the lower arch and proceed by clicking Next. After merging both splints, I proceed to free-from merging. The next steps are crucial for the outcome, so close attention is advised. Under Attachment, select Add and scroll down the library until you find attachment along spline. From the menu, choose Square under Type. Initially, set the width to 12 mm and ensure Make Top Line Flat is checked. Aim to draw a line slightly offset from the central fossa towards the buckle slide. A trial run helps to grasp this movement. Start at the very distal end of the appliance and follow the established path by clicking on every second tooth, placing the final dot on the contour lateral side. Rotate the device with the facial slide forward and adjust the lower border using the offset slider to align the appliance finishing line. Ensure the special plate is visible to confirm the attachment penetrates through it. Check Allow, Any Changes and Apply to complete the operation. Alright, it's time for some tap dancing. Select the free tap and let's groove and smooth with the flatten option. Crank up this brush size and strengthen it to the max. We are going in big. Now, while holding the shift key on your keyboard, let's smooth out those rough edges. Think of it like giving your splint a spa day. Smooth out those lines on the facial side, and if needed, show some love to lingle as well. Let's make the splint shine brighter than a disco ball. Time to double that fun. We are hitting rewind and repeating the exact same dance moves on the lower merge splint. Let's start by adding some attachments to build a flat wall. We are talking 12 mm with same as the upper splint. Now, Lower arches tend to spread their wings a little bit wider, so feel free to give it a tad more room. Attach those babies buckly from the central fossa and oh, don't forget to hit that make top line flat button for a sleek finish. Now, if only we had an option to give the attachment a slimming treatment in the anterior region, hey, but we'll work with what we got. <laughs> Click Apply Any Changes and let hit that Apply button like it's nobody's business. Alright, time to play matchmaker and make sure these arches are closing up to each other nicely. Right click on that upper arch and let's dive into some free form merging action. Now, remember those attachment we are messing with earlier because this time we are subtracting, not adding. Scroll down that library until you hit Load from File and pick your body L for Lower. Make sure you hit rotate to give it a little spin and position just under the device. Don't forget to check allow any changes, hey, because we are all about flexibility here, right? Alright, time to give that lower arch some loving too. Give that lower arch a right click and let's rock the same song and dance. But this time we are flipping the script and loading U for upper from the menu. Hit rotate to give that little spin to make sure it's snug as a bug over the lower arch. Hit that allow any changes button because, hey, we're all about keeping our options open. Now that we got both arches buddy buddy on their flat planes, it's time for a little spa treatment. Select both devices, give them a little right click action and we are back in the free form merging game. This time we are busting out the smoothing tool and cranking that brush size and strength all the way up to 12. Smoothing out those pesky overarching edges like a promiser walking on these knots. Our arches are looking symmetrical, they are practically twins. Our planes are sealing up things tighter than a drum, but hey, we're gonna get that airflow in somehow, right? So we're gonna get Saul Artsy and cut ourselves a little window into the facial of both upper and lower appliances. First up, we right click on the upper and dive into the free from merging fun. Under Attachments, we're gonna go full subtract mode and scrolling down to Paramedic Design. We're talking squares here, people, and we are maxing out those profile options like nobody's business. 
position that attachment just right parallel to the special plate and slice out a nice roomy window. But hey, don't get too crazy here. We are not looking to violate any minimum thickness or create Swiss cheese appliances. Check the allow any changes box and click apply and boom, the windows open for business. If it's big enough, we can call it the day. Or hey, why not spread the love and repeat the same party on the lawn? At this pivotal junction, we have wrapped up our meticulous night guard flat plane design. But hey, we are not hitting the snooze button just yet. Oh no, we are ready to take things up a notch. To craft the ultimate sleep device, it's time to add those game-changing attachments to the buckle of both upper and lower arches. So with a right-click maneuver, we delve into the world of free-form merge from the menu. Under attachments, it's like embarking on a digital treasure hunt, clicking add, scrolling down from the load from file and snacking upper right from the rooster. After a quick rotational adjustment, we ensure the attachment finds its speed spot at the first molar position, snugly parallel to the appliance wall. Then it's rinse and repeat on this left side, maintaining impeccable symmetry and alignment. It's all about position and finesse as we sculpt the perfect sleep solution one attachment at a time. Now let's get serious for a moment. Sleep appliances are serious business and are considered a medical class 2 device that requires FDA 510K submission and approval before you can manufacture them at your lab or dental office. No doctor-patient relationship is formed by watching this video or engaging with its content. Any actions taken based on the information provided in this video are at your own risk and responsibility. The creators of this video and its content disclaim any liability for any loss or damage resulting from reliance on the information. Hey!